Hey, so I want to thank everybody for joining us today for the uh, Iconic CEO weekly meeting. Uh, we want to start bringing more information, and uh, our goal is to create wealth, not just as credit and wealth coaches, but um, individually. So every week, I'm going to be trying to give you uh, new information about what's going on in the market, about the real estate market, the stock market, then your investment portfolio. Uh, I talked this morning on my live, I talked this morning about CDs and about um, the wealth blueprint for uh, children. So if you didn't catch it, go back and watch it. Um, but I have a special guest in. Um, he is uh, one of my good friends. I think that we all should have people in our circle that contribute to wealth. So if I look at the top 10 people uh, that I know that I'm connected with, all of them or somehow um, contribute to my success because they teach me things that I don't know. Uh, whether it's real estate, whether it's stocks, whether it's mutual funds, whatever it is, um, they contribute to a lot of the things that I teach uh, you guys. So I wanna uh, introduce Ian. He is, to me, a stock expert. He has a, a, a program where he teaches about stocks, and he's been a special guest at my men's conference in Atlanta. So I just want to thank you for joining us and giving us a little bit of your time today, man. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. And thank you for all of your amazing help helping me boost my credit score. So thank you. Oh, I am your credit coach, huh? <laughs> My mic cut out. My bad. What'd you say? I said, I am your credit coach, huh? Yeah, man. You you helped me a lot. So uh, it, it's good <laughs> to see them sevens and coming for the eights now. So I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for giving us a little bit of your time. What I wanted to do was kind of chat with you about um, the stock market right now. So a lot of us are investing in the stock market and we've been encouraging people to invest in the stock market. I was invited to a special uh, lunch uh, virtual lunch yesterday with, uh, it was 50 millionaires on the call. And we talked about a lot. We talked about wealth. We talked about things that we teach our kids. We talked about um, what the future beholds as far as investing. We talked about how to surround yourself by positive people, all influential people, all the things that uh, I preach to my CEOs. Uh, but we also talked about, um, uh, a mix, a mix in your portfolio. So 90% of the people on the call have invested in stocks. 90% of the people on the call have bonds. 90% of the people of the call um, have cash, yes, but they also invest in money market security. So I wanted to kind of get your professional opinion on, do you think that um, this is a good time to start investing in stocks? I'm gonna just be honest, I just, got an account to start investing in stocks. Recently, I had not been investing in stocks before, and I know that a number of my CEOs that are on this uh, call is the same thing. So do you think that the market is gonna go down and we should wait, or do you think this is the time to get in? Um, it's gonna go down some more, but it's definitely the time to invest, especially, I can speak to this because I'm black. Um, during the last recession, I didn't know a lot. So a brother grabbed me from Birmingham, uh, kudos to my brother Art. He was working at JP Morgan. Um, he caught City at less than a dollar and rolled it up to six dollars. And some of those stocks that he had from 2007, he still has now. So that's why I told you, like, it's super important for me to share this information with us because we are so afraid to invest because no one walks us through the blueprint on how to do so without charging a lot for it. Um, but it's one of the best times to buy. And the great part is, like, since we've had such a crash now is the time to buy so if you invest in one thing whether it's real estate uh whether it's flipping mobile homes cars the formula is always the same you want to buy for a low price sell it at a high and then um you want to put one dollar in to make five so i would tell everyone if you have not invested already start small pick two companies the two i always recommend are apple or microsoft start there, buy them every month. And a great thing happens, especially for us being black. When we see it work, we go tell everyone that it worked. So um, start small. I tell everyone, if you never invested before, start with one share, then next month do 10. And then if you can afford it, you got some heavy hitters on here that do 100 shares. 
and you will be incredibly thankful because if you would have held um, stocks over the last 10 years, even starting with like 20, 25 grand, you would have made half a million dollars in the last uh, decade doing so. Now, like when you watch, when you watching your stocks like go up and down and you start seeing them go down, should you sell or should you hold on, like hold on and wait for it to go back up? Especially like- oh, oh, the, the, This is a prime example. So especially for everybody who's a credit coach, you ever had somebody and you just got their report and they like, yo, I gave you my information two days ago. They had a 400 and they want to be at an 800 tomorrow. It's the same process. It's like, hey, we got to wait and just work the system, right? Same thing. If they go up and down, I know on average, Apple is going to go up 10 to 15% a year. Microsoft is going to go up 10 to 15%. So we want to buy everything at a low price. So when these recession prices hit, I told everyone is black. Notice no one white is talking right now in February and March. Why? Because they were buying everything up. So when we have these huge crashes, you have to look at them like Black Friday sales because people are buying assets at a low price and then you're able to ride them up. So you can't look at it week to week or day to day. You got to look at it like on a monthly horizon and then see how am I doing month to month. Now, for me personally, there are some people that I told to get into Apple last month and this month they're up 35%. So we just have to take action. And the crazy part is people will be like, I don't like Apple or I don't want to invest in Apple. And I'm like, you're texting me from an iPhone. I can see the blue bubble in the text. Like everyone has iPhone. It's not like, you know, Apple is some company people have never heard of, but I want us to not only be consumers, but more importantly, be investors. So for someone that never invested in stock, doesn't understand that. And I think it, I feel like stock is the same as credit. Like, or just financial literacy, period. So mm -hmm. if a person doesn't invest in stock or a person doesn't have good credit or a person doesn't own real estate or a person doesn't have bonds or a person doesn't have CDs or a person doesn't have mutual funds, it's typically because they don't understand it and they've never been yep. taught. Yep. So it's hard for somebody to take risk in the area that they don't understand. <laughs> so Yeah, yeah if, I agree. And I think our grandparents could say that, but in our generation, we can't say that. We got the best computer. It's too much. Too it's much. too much information. So, and I'll have you guys start here. Number one, go to Yahoo Finance and I'll type it in chat. Yahoo Finance is absolutely free. Second thing I want you to do after that is I want you to click on five year and then look at a company on the five year chart. If it's going up over the last five years, it's a good investment. If it's going down, it's not good. So if you look at Ford and GE, not a good investment. And it's the same thing in business. Over the course of five years, if I'm working with you, what is my credit score going to do? It's going to look like a rocket ship to the upside. People who don't work. And I'm telling you guys, I personally work with DeMont. He got me booming. Got stuff off of my account that shouldn't have been there. Great. People who don't work with you, their scores tend to go down. It's the same thing in the market. So if you guys go to Yahoo Finance, look at the five-year month chart, even um companies that have dipped some like apple they've already recovered like microsoft went um in the month of uh, in last month excuse me they dropped down to 138 bucks two months later and that was in uh excuse me in march now they're at 180 dollars and 76 cent so if you would have waited two months and just did it on your own you would have a better return than most firms on wall street are given just knowing what to look at. and the crazy thing is like uh, to be honest us being black we make everything hot and don't monetize it we make everything popular but we won't own any of the assets associated with it so the same way you're trying to wake people up around the power of credit um and it, like you give people power when you help them get to an 800 or they get that navy federal card they got that nice balance on it right same thing with stocks it's like you just got to stick with the program buy quality don't quit and as soon as you keep investing you have enough shares and i've always said it even if you look at buffett there's three things that buffett really relies on well four things really the stock market real estate insurance and credit he's not picking one he does all of them i know he has more attention as an investor but buffett has a ton of real estate 
owns Geico, is huge into credit, whether corporate or personal, and invests in the market, and we should be doing the same thing. So CDs have ingre- incredible value. So does life insurance. It's not either or. I think us as a community, we make it like a gang war. Should I do real estate or stocks? Like it's both and credit and cash and you have a business and your mentor and it's everything at one time. I agree, man. Uh, excuse me, my uh, CEOs, we're actually in a, a business meeting right now and we are live and we are recording. So I would like for you to, uh, to go live with me as well. I'm not by myself. I don't want to feel like I'm by myself. So I know many of you have your cameras off. This is our our weekly meeting. So you should be prepared for this meet, meeting every week. So I would like for you to turn your cameras on so that Ian can see you and so that people watching can see you and so that you can start branding yourself as a wealth and credit coach so that people know who you are. So if you can turn your camera on, I would like that. Um, and I would like for you to um, I know that many of you started investing in stocks with me uh, at the same time uh, during this crisis. So if you guys have any questions for Ian, I would you like- started a good time. Yeah, I would like for you to ask him now because he's only with us for a short period of time because he got to do some stuff with his son. So if you have any questions about the stock market, then uh, please uh, ask them now because I'm sure somebody else has the same question if you have it. Thank you. Yeah, please fire away. <clears throat> I have a question. So how do you base your analysis outside of looking at the chart for five years? What do you look at the uh, market cap? Um, what do you look at? What's your confirmation? Um, I prefer, so I use uh, technical indicators, but also like I prefer a company had to have little or no debt um, and a lot of cash on hand. So Apple has almost 200 billion um, on hand, good sign. And then also the third thing I look for, are they a leader in their sector? So an easy strategy for everyone, if you look at a particular sector, like if you invest in the number one or number two company, um, you'll be fine. I call it the LeBron James method of investing. Like LeBron, he'll go partner with whoever's hot at the time, which is like a strategy he learned from Buffett. So if you, um, so number one, little to no debt. Number two, I'm looking at the five year month chart. And then also if there are one or two in their space, same with Apple and Microsoft. Apple and Microsoft are one and two in the tech space. Um, so it's, it's an easy investment to make. Hey, uh, Ian, somebody is in the, the chat and they're asking, um, should they get out of, they, they've they invested in the airlines. So should they get out of that stock or yes. do you think that's something they should stay in? Uh, unless you can hold for five years, Delta, United, um southwest all all in trouble and i've been beating this drum before buffett made his declaration i was saying this probably nine weeks ago um airlines retail stocks and hotels are going to be in trouble now if you have the discipline to hold for 10 years or five years you'll be good most people though can't take that kind of beating there are other places where you can get a good return in the interim that will go up now and later but uh, airlines are in trouble. And airlines before this were not a great investment. Um, but like I said before, and maybe when we have more time, I can like do a full training about how to read everything. Mm-hmm. But United was, the high was at 97.85 back in the end of 27, uh, 2017. And it's slowly dropped since then. Like from a stats uh, standpoint, airlines are not a good um, investment to make. Like anything that is an engine, that has an engine in it, I don't like to invest in. So, um, but if you can buy United, like around six bucks, if it drops that low and you can hold it for five years, you'll make out like a bandit. But if you bought it at 40 or 20, um, no good, it's no good. So I- I'm gonna let somebody else ask a question, but I know that I have some people on here um, that have the same question. So, you know, one thing I teach is that diversification it's, and if mm-hmm. we're building wealth, we need to find coaches and mentors in those areas that we're weak in. So, again, I'm not the best fitness person, so I have a fitness coach. Um, so I know a lot of people, that's how I met probably 90% of you, is because you were not the best with credit or maintaining your credit or even knowing 
how to leverage your credit. So you found me, which was your credit coach. Um, so in, so if a person wants to get a person that helps them trade their stock and tell them when to trade their stock and, and what's a good stock to get and how much they should invest, like what's a, what, is a good amount that a person like if a person came to you what would be a good amount that they should start with so if i only had a hundred dollars or if i only had a thousand dollars could i work with you or do i have to have a substantial amount of money before i could come and work with a uh, a stock trader um a substantial amount but the thing so my my business model is like this 99 percent of stuff that i know i give away the other one percent i just save for higher end clients but i'll tell you guys what to invest like Literally, buy Apple and buy Microsoft, buy one share, and in 60 days, write me back and tell me how it's went for you. That's it. Start there. And then after that, if you guys have any advice, you can follow me on Instagram or Facebook. My site is joinredpanda.com. I'm on IG Live probably three times a week, um, especially for our community. Like, for me, it's not a money grab. Um, it's me just trying to help people first. And that's why I give like most of my advice away for, for free. Because the truth be told, you don't need someone else to do it for you. You can automate it and do it yourself. So if you just treat investing like a bill that you have to pay and you just buy stocks every month as your first bill, you're fine. You'll be A-OK. -okay. Just buy every single month. Good market, bad market. Because the truth is, we need to get to the point where we have 10,000 shares. And no one wants to really have that conversation, but like, let's think about retirement. So if you have 10,000 shares in your possession and it goes up $87 in profit, you have $870,000 for retirement. And I know people say, man, it's going to take a while to get there, but it was the same thing when building your credit. Like if you are at a 420, it's going to take you a while to get to 800, but it's better than not starting at all. And the great thing with us is when we start, and we start sharing it with our friends, we end up finding money. Now we can't go to the club. We can't pop bottles. We can't buy Gucci and Balenciaga. We're saving more money as a result. So it's like, now let's pile that money into assets that will give us more money and we'll be good. Well, take my Balenciaga from me, Ian. No, I mean, you good. You, you, got, you got enough cash flow where you can still have the Balenciaga, but you got <laughs> Balenciaga and Bonds at the same time, and Boeing and Apple. Hey, you question. So... If if I have if I have a ten thousand dollar credit card and I want to flip it, would you suggest that I could take a risk in the stock market right now and and buy ten thousand dollars worth of uh, stock? How long would it take me to flip it? Just professional opinion. The professional opinion. Um, I'm. It's tough. Well, for you, yes, because you have other cash flow. Where if it didn't go well, you can pay it off. The average person, I would say, no, don't do it. For you, yes, um, but the number one sector you guys have to invest in is technology. We're on Zoom, so that's another good company. Google is good, great. So if you guys invest in tech, on average, you should get anywhere from on a low end, 10% return, high end, 35 to 40% return, depending on what the interest is, that will tell you how long it would take you to pay it off. Okay, so. do, you, do you suggest that um beginners that we start with uh robin hood that we start trading on robin hood do you think that's a good app yeah robin hood is, is uh good to start with because it's easy like if you go to fidelity vanguard td ameritrade which i use um it can be tough to learn how to navigate and what we need to do more than anything is just execute right away like you don't need to wait eight months because i literally know people who've been waiting since 08 to invest in the market they was like, I'm waiting for the next crash. Here we are. They have taken no action. Take, and, and you guys have it too. Like, there'll be a person that'll reach out to you every month and be like, man, I really need to fix my credit. This 385, eat me alive. And two years later, they still haven't done anything. It's like, man, make a decision and, and take that first step. So Robinhood is a good place to start if you are an absolute beginner and to take the fear away. I've even had some people recently like use Cash App. And they're like, man, I got 15%. Great. Uh, let me go to a bigger platform so I'm comfortable, and then uh, they'll start on a bigger platform. But yes, start small. Okay. Hey, Ian, uh, I got a question. Hey, how are you? I got two. I got two questions. As a matter of fact, uh, one, uh, um, when it comes to your decision making, uh, with quarterly earnings, does that affect 
your decision making at all. I mean, in the, the earnings per share each quarter, uh, actual versus expected. Um, like if they if they predicted something but they hit below it, does that affect your uh, decision? No, no, because I, I think a good business should not be measured on a quarterly basis. Um, but usually, the good companies like Apple, Microsoft, two of you two that I mentioned, they are they usually do above what they're expected. Um, poor companies like Ford and GE usually report below, but I'm looking over a company over a 10 year horizon to hold it. So I'm not worried about if they have a dip over the course of a three month period. Yeah. But because it's not, the, it's, it's kind of like saying, well, will you leave your wife if she's not acting her best over three months? It's like, <laughs> you've been together 10 years. It's like, if that's the case, the divorce rate will be 99%. Right. <laughs> right. That's a good so one. Like you that. have to look at a, a longer term horizon, but um, if you just look at those two that I mentioned, like if I take Apple and I go and look back, let's just say 10 years, 10 years ago, Apple was at 33.65. So let's say you wouldn't have got in at that low. Let's say you got in at 55. Apple's at 297.56 right now, just for holding. All right. Yeah, nice. That was good. That was a great answer. And my second one, uh, when it comes to cars and puts, do you base your decision off of the five-year history or what's the time span that you base the uh, cost and puts off of? Um, so I do the uh, features. So features pays more than options. Um, so I'm looking at a daily chart. If I'm going to decide, same thing, if I'm going to buy or if I'm going to short the market, I'm looking at the hour chart and then the 10-minute chart. Um, okay. For those of you that are doing options, I have to warn you, you should only do, be doing like two trades a week maximum to limit the number of trades that you're taking and not over trade because the number one reason why people don't win in trading is because they take too damn many you should know the number of trades that you should take for the year before you start your year hey got you thank you man i appreciate you sir thank you brother i appreciate it and great questions too by the way all right now hey ian what's up man my name is Dwayne. Uh, i think you're out here in houston right yeah i'm here in houston how you doing i'm all right brother i uh, met you at the uh, men's conference man um, nice to meet you, brother. Yeah, we gotta yeah. get together after this craziness is over. Even though people yeah. out here are already going out. Definitely, man. Um, what is your opinion on these uh, energy, uh, oil, and gas? Uh, oil and gas, I don't like. But give me a energy company, and I'll look at it for you. Uh, one of the ones I looked at was Chesapeake, and then I know another one is uh, Whiting Petroleum. Yeah, Whiting is tough. I wouldn't touch that one. Um, there is. I'll give you a gem that's okay. Next era. Um, ticker symbol is NEE. -E. It's okay. okay. Um, oil, you got to be very careful with. And I've been saying this for months like, oil is a downward facing asset. Yep. Um, and, and USO popped up to 18, but that was because of a stock split, not because of the actual value of it mm -hmm. increased. Um, but let me look at Chesapeake real quick. Hey, Gush, Gush has been doing me pretty good. Yeah, Gush is solid. Um, it's been, it's had a nice. I have Gush also. Yeah, over the last month, it's been doing pretty good. I would uh, tell you to look to take profit after this, in the next month. I'm about to go back and read. <laughs> after yeah. this week, I'm about to go back and redo all my stuff because I'm in the wrong areas. Yeah, man, j just send me your stuff. And then <laughs> I'll be like, yes, no, good. Same you do with mine. Like, when I'm like, hey, man, what should I do? you like, do this, do this, do this. Do. And I'm like, oh, it worked. Okay, great. Same thing. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's a great thing about having a network. You don't have to figure out, and I feel like as our community, we want to figure out everything on our own to say that we did it. Right. Just get the result. Right. Yeah. Like if I had to send the letters out to the bureaus, they're probably be still on my table. Right. Yeah. It's the same thing. So um, Gush has done great, but it's, it's two time leverage, so it's good, but you got to look to take profit um, pretty soon as well. But yeah, Demont, send me your stuff. I'll tell you which ones are good. So those of you that just that are just joining us or that have been with us so far, what we've learned from Ian, who is a stock expert, is that uh, those of us that invested in the um, in the, uh, the 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 airline industry, we need to get out unless we want to wait five to ten years for it to go back up. Uh, those of us that invested in the car industry, <laughs> we need okay. to get out unless we want to wait for it to go back up in five to 10 years. Uh, so uh, we need to invest in technology or um, he also recommended Apple and uh, Microsoft. So if you have enough share, what about, what about Amazon? Amazon is one of the stock picks in my stock club. Um, 
Amazing. I mean, even in the Rolling Out article from four years ago, I told everybody to put every dollar they could in at nine ninety, and they thought it told me I was crazy. And now Amazon, uh, within a few months, should hit three thousand because great companies are going to continue to be great. Amazon's at twenty three seventeen now, um, and that's why I tell you guys to look at that. It's kind of like basketball too. Like I always say, the players that were good five years ago are still good now, and the ones that were trash five years ago they're still trash now. Um, great companies are going to continue to perform. You don't have to look. A lot of times people are trying to find a home run opposed to betting on a LeBron. So for all my fellas, like if I can put LeBron, Katie, Giannis, Kyrie, and Durant on your team, which you, everyone's like, yeah, bro, I'll take them any day, right? Then we get to stocks and it's like, well, I want to find a company that has a market cap of $1 million because I think it's going to go to 800. It's like, no, just bet on the ones that have already been winning. Tie your money to the winners because Bezos and um, Tim Cook and even with Facebook, like you're tying your money to the best CEOs in the world. Like we are not better at CEOs than Jeff Bezos. So let's give him some of our money. And when people order them prime boxes and have them dropped off, we can profit as that stock goes up. So what are your thoughts on Tesla? Do you think that's a good stock? Amazing. Um, too high at 700 and 800. That's another one of the uh, picks in our stock club, but uh, you have to wait for the 500s and for it to come down. That's too high at 700 and too high at 800 or 900 to, to start to invest there. Look at it like a house. Like if the, the highest price house in the area is 968,000, you don't want to pay 925 for a house next to it. Like if you can get it on sale for 500, then you can have a lot of equity on the upside. So when the market drops and you're seeing Dow down a thousand, those are some of the days you guys should be looking to get in because the market has came back into a range in which we want. And it feels counterintuitive, but most people end up buying at a high and hoping that it goes higher. And in business, I don't want you to hope. I want you to know exactly where to get in, where to get out. But Tesla is amazing. And, and I'll say this, Tesla is a technology company masquerading as a car company. It's not. Um, if you go Google what Tesla's up to, you'll it'll be clear as day. And then Elon Musk, which just had his child, um, he's from the PayPal mafia back in the day, back in 99, was a co-founder of PayPal. He's smart to apply what he knew from technology and put it into the automotive industry, industry which has not innovated in a long time. So Tesla is a technology company masquerading as a car company. Thank you. You're welcome. So our guy, our job is to be have millionaire mindsets. I talked earlier on the wealth blueprint, and I also talked about um how to start grooming our kids from the ages one to twelve. Yep. Um, and I want you guys to know, like, even with the communication or understanding how to communicate with our kids. So when, our, when, when, our, when we show our kids Walt Disney movies, then now we're able to say, hey, this is how you own a share of Walt Disney. So we need to start sh showing our kids how they can buy shares of companies. That means that we have to start under, or when we're driving our Tesla and we're saying, hey, son, look, we own a part of Tesla. Like we have shares of Tesla. Um, so we need to start as a community, we need to start learning stocks and we need to start teaching our kids that they can have ownership in these companies as well. So uh, anybody else have any questions for Ian before he leaves us? And I'll say this, as a parent, uh, kids follow what we do. So I drill my son every single, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, like you see me do it. Like I'll walk him through the market. Like if you learn one thing a day and if your kid's over three, start sharing with them now. So by the time they're like six or seven, it's second nature to them. Like, I hate the fact that, like, I always say, like, we'll put our kids in basketball camp at three, but we won't teach them about investing until they're 28, and it's too late at that point. So if you learn something, share it with your kid, and it helps a lot because it helps you bond a lot more. And then they'll tell you, well, I like this game. And then there's usually, like, take two interactive or Activision. There's a stock related to that in which you can go look and invest in the thing that they like same thing like you said with disney like 
Disney's shut down now, but it won't be in 12 months or 18 months. Disney will be back up to the upside. So while you're watching movies on Disney Plus, you can say, hey, we own some of that and start early. Because the thing that pushed me, like I grew up in East Chicago, Indiana. I grew up five minutes away from Gary. No one came to East Chicago and tell us about investing, like at all. So that's why I pushed this so hard. Because if I would have known this and my parents would have known this just with a simple like $500 investment per month, I could have been millionaires by the time I was 25. So start your kids young because compounding, compound interest is going to take over and is going to give your kids a lot of money. So if not for you, I do it for them, please. Hey, Ian, um, I was on this call. Hold on, hold on, Carlos. I was on this call. I told you guys I was on this call yesterday with, uh, it was about 50 millionaires on this one call. My buddy put it together. Uh, it was a, it was a, a great, a great session. Um, but I, I told you a lot of them have have stocks, so they kept. I kept hearing blue chip. Mm -hmm. So what is what is blue chip? Is that a is that a a, a a form of a stock? It says blue chip stock. Yeah, blue chip. Just think of it as like quality. Um, so it's like they have a good reputation, they're reliable, they're consistent. So just think of like a quality company. So like Disney, Walmart, McDonald's, and because they have like a global operation at that point. So it's not like a fly by night company. It's just like highly quality company. And that's why I like to use analogies because I think um, – we as a people get it better when we talk about it like that. It's the same thing as like investing in LeBron, Kevin Durant, Kyrie, Giannis, et cetera. Um, the same quality companies that have been around, McDonald's, Microsoft, Apple, AMD, like they're good quality uh, companies to invest in that have been around and they're safe. Carlos, you have a question? Yes, I do. How you doing, Ian? This is Carlos. I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Uh, it's a nice area that you grew up in, northern part of Indiana. Hey, um, shout out to my 219 people. Yes, sir. So I was wondering about the cruise lines, like Norwe Norwegian and uh, Roy uh, Royal, I believe. Yeah. I was wondering, can you give me a quick synopsis of what you might think? Should I, you know, let it go? Or what do you think they might do in the next quarter? Um, I mean... All investment decisions have to be at least five years. And, and I was saying this before, uh, if you guys like check out my Instagram or my YouTube or my Market Monday show, all cruise lines are gonna get demolished in this process. So if you wanna buy more, like Royal, if it gets down to 1150, you can buy some more. Um, Norwegian is the same thing. Carnival is the same thing as the automotive industry. If you can hold it five years, man, you'll be a genius come 2025. This next year, a year and a half is going to be tough because if people cannot get in their cars and go anywhere and cannot travel because of Corona, there's no revenue to come in for the company. But if you can get it at a low, if you can hold it for five years, you'll be okay. But I need people to realize like this virus and this crash is like something we've never seen. It's going to change the way that we do business all around. But if you can hold it and you can catch it even at, at 20 bucks flat and give it, five years it'd be back to 110 120 um with no problem and you look like a genius in five years the tough part is like can you hold it the next 18 months right if so you'll be great okay appreciate it brother yeah you're welcome i think the key to investing and, and, and you've said this before is understanding that it's not going to be a fast flip like many of yes. us like mo some of us that came from the streets or some of us that have invested in real estate and we could buy a house and invest in it and flip it and double our money. Like this is, you have to get into this expecting that it's not going to be overnight. And I think that yeah. a lot of people yeah. that hit me up asking me what I thought about stocks and should they get in there? Of course, I'm going to say yes, because I know that 90% of millionaires have stock a part of their portfolio. And like yeah. you just said, Warren Buffett, like stock is a part of his portfolio. So if I'm trying to, be wealthy or build wealth i need to do what wealthy people do but yes. <laughs> but i need to understand that it's going to take time 
and I need to I need to consult with people that are um, experts in that area. And, and even and I'll say this coming from where I come from, um, I like from the street perspective. I know a lot of people want to flip fast, but it doesn't matter if you flip fast and then go fuck off the money. Secondly, for those of us that have done it, when you double money, doubling still isn't enough. So you're like what I call broke plus. Like it's great to turn 10 to 20, but the 20, you really need 50 to be okay. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, let's get into the habit of, because even if you look over a 10 year period, if you would have held Apple for 10 years, you'd be up 1200%. There's not many people flipping houses or doing multifamily that are getting a 1200% return over a 10 year period because that greed part ends up messing them up. So that's why I say it's not either or, it's both. It's investing and real estate and having good credit and having no debt. Cause you know this from being around, like you said, millionaires that are like DECA millionaires. They don't do just one thing. Like one of the richest guys I know, he was like, bro, you need 2000 streams in your business. You need 2,000 streams. And we always hear seven. I'm like, shit, 2,000? Like, <laughs> that's a different level of cash flow. Uh-huh. And then and that's why I kept telling people, like, yo, you need 60 months of savings. And they're like, bro, you tripping? I'm like, listen, I'm from East Chicago. Like, we did not have 60 days sometimes. I know it sounds crazy, but then this crisis happened. And I'm like, it's good to know that I can weather the storm and be okay. So, and even like when we were at your conference, you was talking about it too. Hey, you need, you need a membership. You need a membership. You need some cash flow coming in. I took the vice and ran with it. So it's like, okay, it's not just one thing. It's to do everything. So I know some of you guys are afraid, but every billionaire, if you look, they got their money from investing in the market or they were tied to financial services. No one else but our community competes whether to do one or another. Like everyone else does both. Hey, Ian, somebody has a question on Facebook. They said, um, why will it take five years for the airlines to bounce back? Everyone will be flying. I missed the explanation. So they're saying- why Airlines were a terrible investment before this. So my question is, and I, had, I asked somebody this the other day, but I didn't get a clear answer. So if the airline, so the airlines are getting bailed out. So when the airlines get bailed out, <coughs> do they have to pay that money back or no? Depends on the terms of the deal. Some will. All right. Um, some won't, but if, if they get a certain amount of money, they will get taken over. And then there's a certain amount of restrictions that you will have also. Right. Um, but if you look at airlines, yeah, people will start flying, but you've also had businesses that have been closed for two to three months as well. Most business owners didn't have enough cash flow to last 20 days. So what do you think they're going to do after they're being shut down? for 60 days. If you need a bailout, that's like going to your parents being an adult, like, yo, mama, I need some help. Float me. Hold on, baby. So you got to take that in consideration. So revenue is not going to pop up and the cash flow in airlines was tight already. It's tight already. So it's not a good investment. It's, it's like getting a NBA player on your team that's been in the league 15 years and he has three blown ACLs and it's like, yeah, but this is going to be the year where he's an all-star not going to happen. It's going to take time for the economy to recover. We haven't seen anything like this. This is not like 08. It's worse. Uh, at least in 08, people could go to work. Yeah, true. People are locked in their houses. And now even like on a financial, I'm sure, sure you guys are seeing it too. The credit card scams are going through the roof now. Like even my bank called me last month and was like, listen, use your debit card and lock it on the app right away. Financial fraud is at an all time high. Because everyone's hurting. So certain companies and certain industries are not going to recover as fast. We won't be able to go to normal how we did in 08 after a couple months. This is dramatically different. Invest in tech, please. Yep, I agree with you there also, Ian, because I got something in the, on my email and it's this company that normally sells a product for like 30 or $40. And it was free, yeah. mm. <laughs> except for shipping and handling. So they yeah. want to get you to add your information in there. And of course, it's still your identity more than likely. But this yes. product is normally like $40. And I've been looking at it and I was like, oh, it's free today? 
<laughs> yeah, and it's always a hidden catch with it. If you just pay that shipping, they're either going to sell your information or some kind of fraud is going to be done. And I'm sure you guys are seeing like account little, even like I, somebody told me today they had like four transactions go through for less than a dollar. I'm like, mm, they testing your account. See if you're paying attention. Yeah. It's higher than ever. So you guys have to be careful and look at your statements every day um, because businesses are tight and the scammers are out here in full force. While the so, mind and, is preparing, one more quick question. I mean, it's still pertaining to the airlines. I still can't wrap my head around, which I believe you, you're the expert and I'm going to abide by what you're saying. But I'm just wondering, with the airlines, it's at $9 or something like that, like American Airlines, for instance, do you think that they'll even get back to selling at $30 per share? Because yeah, is it going people to still have years? to travel for work, and there's a lot of traveling being done just going, you know, running a business. But the thing is, do, okay, from a, from a corporate perspective, they're seeing, corporations are seeing how much, and we all knew working from home was the way before now, right? But corporations are seeing, well, if I let a certain part of my workforce stay at home, A, I don't have to pay as much, and corporations are going to start playing this game where you're going to be like part-time plus, because Lost him. Yeah, I can't hear. I thought that was me again. And I think you gotta connect. He gotta connect back. Sorry about that. My, my, my mic cut off. Yeah, revenue won't be good for airlines. Um, so even though people have to travel, the revenue will not be as strong as it once was, but it'd take probably about about four years to, to go up. The high for American Airlines was um in 2018, 50 nine bucks it's at 951 now so 951 now it's not going to work and you guys know this from being a business when you have a drop like that when you lose more than half your revenue and and airlines are at like four percent five percent capacity when the economy opens up we're not going to go back to normal right away we're not going to do it but if you can hold it five years you'll be good but it's going to take a while of us are used to things just bouncing back uh, we don't really understand how long this is really going to take to bounce back. So yep. um, I think that what I've learned from this is because uh, I'm, I've, I've got stock in almost every airline and I fly Delta. So I bought Delta stock. I have spirit stock. I have American airline stock. I have every car industry. Uh, so again, I'm going to send you my stuff so you can check it out. But pretty much he's telling us those of you, and I know many of my partners, uh, we all, bought a lot of the same stock um, is to sell that stock and buy into technology. I know some people uh, on Facebook are asking about oil. He already mentioned oil. He said Terrible. oil. oil. Like, like, for real, I have a theory, and I can't prove it yet, right? And I, I don't want to ru ruin some of our relationships, but I, I truly believe when these stocks get bad, they find a way to push them to the black community so we can buy them so they, they can liquidate and have people to buy the shares and say, hey, it's a good deal. Because why are certain other companies but like think about this? Why was nobody talking about Zoom three months ago? In our room, we were talking about Zoom three to four months ago as a stock. I don't hear any I didn't see anybody black talking about that. Shout out to my guy Kobe, like who's in my room every day, my live trading room. I don't see anybody talking about Zoom three months ago. We and I'll always say this, and when I said it at your conference, no one gives black people financial information first. There's no, no entity, no bank, no hedge fund that comes to the black community first and like, yo, I'm going to give y'all the heads up. This shit about to be fucked up. It never happens. It never, and that's why I start getting on Facebook like, yo, if we break 2,900 on ES, it's over. Recession. Oh, you trip next day, Bank of America. Global recession. You guys can go back and see when I posted. So I'm not telling you something out of like being malicious. Like I'm just telling you the airlines and cruise lines are going to have a hard time recovering and I don't want us to get hurt in the process of hoping that it's going to come back up. Hey, is there a specific tech company you suggest? I, 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 I gave you two of my best off top. Apple, Microsoft. Gotcha. Th th that's MJ and Kobe. <laughs> you put, put Michael and Kobe on the team, you already know. 
If they share the ball, you already know what's going to happen. I have Game a question, on. Mr. Ian. Yes. My name is Jackie. Nice to meet and, you. Uh, uh, and Coach, I think I heard you say uh, start with Robin Hood if you know absolutely nothing. And you know me in IT. I just I don't get along. So my question is, when I go on tomorrow to buy the Microsoft and the Apple, is it going to be something that's easy to do or am I going to have to be a rocket scientist to buy it? If you can send a text, you can buy stock on Robinhood. Okay. All right. Thank you. And if it doesn't work, just send me a message on Facebook and be like, Ian, I'll be like, okay, I got you. you okay. No invoice, I got you. But, but it's easy. It's the easiest platform to use. Okay. And Coach Warren, Ian, I will certainly text him. I, I, listen, him. I can hear it in your voice. I already know. <laughs> okay. I'm prepared. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate you guys so much. I got to run to my uh, um, call, but um, the, my, I would love to help. And, you know, maybe we can tell them, maybe we can set up something maybe like once a month yeah. and uh, I can help guide everyone through. That's fine. Thank you, man. I appreciate you for giving us your time, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for the boost on uh, my credit scores. It's real good to see it real high like that. So no you're, you're amazing. Love y'all. Love you too, man. Peace. All right. So thanks everybody for, um, for joining us this we normally don't allow people to enter into our uh private meetings but i made this public because i wanted i know that a lot of people have been hitting me up a lot of people have been hitting up my partners uh and other ceos in our community and asking about uh stocks and this to me you know and, and darnell and i and uh and aaron and i karen and i like we we've talked about it uh and to me, if I was going to get in it, I would get in it now. Um, but again, you still have to understand what you're getting in because now I have a whole bunch of airline stock, like I said, that I'm about to sell tonight because it doesn't make sense um, if it's going to take five or 10 years for them to come out of this, which it does make sense that I, I feel like a lot of corporations are going to start having their employees work from home because it just makes sense and it costs them less. So, um, so that's just my take on it. Again, I'm not a, a GOAT in this area, but I want to make sure that we all stay in tune with what's going on and, um, and move forward from there. Darnell, I know we have a, we have a, we have a, uh, investment group and I think I've seen some people on here, but what's, what's your take on, on, on investing in stocks right now, brother? Uh, yeah, it's definitely, we, uh, we're doing pretty good. Uh, I'm uh I'm over here baffled about the airlines. <laughs> That's uh that kind of hurt my heart a little bit because <laughs> we got a we got quite a few airlines. Uh, we're doing good on oil as well, but uh overall we're doing great. My Boeing my Boeing is even dropping. Like I lost money on my Boeing. It's been going down. Anybody else not? Yeah, I'm looking at that right now. Boeing has dropped, and now that he said that, I'm looking at these stocks. Marijuana companies are doing. Your phone's going out, brother. What'd you say? Hello? Thank you. I have no idea what happened. My computer just shut down and reset. <laughs> 